My name is Kelsang Wangchuk. I am a ordained Buddhist monk uh, from the New Katampa tradition and I'm presently the resident teacher at the Kiadra Buddhist Centre and Meditation Centre in Blackpool. I'm Father Stephen Pearson and I'm a Catholic priest. My name's Ian, Ian Abbott. I'm a chairman of the Lancashire Secular Humanists. I'm also a humanist celebrant, so I conduct non-religious ceremonies. Were you ever brought up as being religious? Yes, I was brought up in a fairly uh, observant Methodist family. In fact, uh, my early life was entirely wrapped up with the church. Uh, not at all. Um, like I expect most people, actually, in Britain, I believe that religion was a cause of most of the intolerance and wars in the world. So, so for example, on Monday night I would go to youth club at the church. On Tuesdays I would go to boys brigade there. Thursdays I would go swimming with the church swimming club. You know, I wasn't very interested in religion to start off with. Sorry, Wednesdays I would go swimming with the church swimming club. Thursdays I would go to Bible study classes. Friday was boys brigade again. Saturday I played football for the church team. And on Sundays I went to church. Yes, really. Um, since I, I was brought up, I was baptised as a Catholic. I was brought up as, a, as a, a Catholic Christian. And perhaps apart from a couple of months in my late teenage years, pretty much, yeah, I followed uh, a faith as a Catholic. And what happened in those months in the teenage years? I, I was just angry with a lot of people, I suppose. So... Uh, um, it seemed like the decent thing to do just to stop. But when I stopped, I realised how much I missed the connection with the, uh, with the expression of the faith that going to church means for me. So I kind of, even in that, I learned a lesson. Do you find it challenging to tolerate secular and atheist perspectives? Uh, not at all. Is it challenging for you to tolerate religious perspectives? Absolutely not, no. no I'm, one of the tenets of humanism is, is that you have one life and it's, you live it as you choose. So it's, it would be hypocritical for me to demand the right to live without religion and then insist that people who are religious should also live as I tell them to live. Religions aren't always suitable for everyone. We have to choose which one helps us to grow individually as a person. I think it's bound to be challenging. Um, having said that, I think we also, we as people of faith, Christian and otherwise, kind of learn things from, um, from a, a secular perspective and from a, an atheist perspective. But when such values are in, embodied, for example, in the law of the country, uh, and in the values across society, then as a Christian particularly, yes, it is challenging. Do you think religion has changed in any way over recent years? For example, do you think less people are following religion? <laughs> Probably the last 50 years as a secular element of society has developed and become more confident than the, the challenges to, especially to the young, uh, Christians and, and others who follow a revealed religion. So you have this situation where you're telling a five-year-old child, go to school, believe what your teachers say. Your teachers say that, that London is the capital of England, then London is the capital of England. If they say that five and five is ten, five and five is ten. And then they come home and say that, that God is looking at everything I do or that, that virgins can have babies, or that people can walk on water, or that somebody can make a fish butty go a long way. So then I, I object to that, because that's not a fact, that's a belief. And it should be taught as a belief. Those values are difficult to continue, that, that, that they're more difficult to instill in people, for people to see the value of, where perhaps secularism might, might give people supposedly greater freedom. 
and it, and it does go deep. I mean, I, for example, I explained how I was brought up in religion, and it, that still is there. Those seeds have been sown deeply in my brain, and I know there are occasions when we have tough times in our lives, as we all do, that, that these thoughts creep back into my head, and I resent that. I resent that somebody put them there without my permission. Do you think that Buddhism has changed in any way over recent years? Well, the problem with that question is I wasn't brought up in a Buddhist country, so I don't really know uh, much about other Buddhist religions. Our religion is a very, or our tradition, should I say, is very modern. Uh, it started in this country. Do you think that religion in general has changed over recent years? Oh, yeah, what religion's very good at is... is reshaping itself to fit the whole that it thinks it should fit. In, a very good example of this is going on at the moment, particularly in, in the Anglican Church and to a certain extent in the Catholic Church. In society we have equality rules. We have rules where people should not be prejudiced by the state based on their gender or based on their sexuality or based on their colour. So we have these equality rules. The Church of England is tearing itself apart about gay marriage. The rest of society really couldn't care less. There's no denying that religious people do lots and lots of good works as well. They do charitable works. They help people who are homeless and needy. But it's not exclusively religious people that do that. All people do that. I don't, I don't accept that somebody who is, for example, feeding homeless people, that same person wouldn't do that had they not been told to do it by their church. We are all human beings, we all have empathy with our fellow human beings, and most people would help somebody in need. It's a human emotion, it's not necessarily a religious instruction. Do you think that perhaps over the past 50 years, people have felt that, or grown to feel, that religion is too ideological, and that perhaps that's why people have moved away from it, the Western society? It's, it, it's, it's arguable. It, it, in my reading of things, I think secular and atheistic kind of cultures presume a certain freedom for individuals, but they also take away our capacity to look at life in its totality. For example, I, I, I couldn't live life with the idea of this is it and nothing else. So as an atheist, I'd be hopeless, you know, and, and secularism meaning that the, the, the freedom of the individual to uh, express her or himself and, and to live by whichever values are current, um, often don't give people a fixed point of who they are as a person in the world. Uh, in this society at the moment, I, th I think we're, almost especially in the West, we're saturated with um, iconic figures and also these you know, things that we think that, you know, we desire to, to be happy, to aim for, you know, to be successful, to have more money, to have a fast car. And I think everybody's realising now that these things don't make us happy, that actually our life becomes hollow and insignificant when we put this to be our mainstay of what we want to achieve. You know, so as a Christian looking at those, those, those current, very popular kind of ideologies, I see those not providing what human beings will need. So in the last, excuse me, in the last <clears throat> 50 years, um, certainly revealed religions like Christianity, Islam, and Judaism have faced challenges in terms of numbers falling, but I think perhaps those who then come to and embrace those religions will speak of the surety of themselves as individuals which come from those religions. So would you say, without being too political, that religious ideologies are what you have a problem with? Well, the, the, only the ideology that, that other people should conform. This, I, it's the evangelising that I really object to. So in a sense, do you frown on modern ideologies that, that people have? Well, any ideologies that put some people above other people um, and, you know, cause pain and suffering, then 
I see that as a sickness in our society that we need to to help others to see, you know, the problems and how we can address those problems. My ideology to my daughter is, look, believe things on evidence, examine, question, ask, everything. It's almost a scientific model, and that's a good model because it never satisfied with the answers. It's always asking more, asking why, questioning. Do you think we need to have faith, or do you think that people should believe things on evidence? How would you explain love? It's a good question, and one I can't answer. Well, then, in a sense, that's why I would say we can't simply empirically establish life around us. We have values which are important for us as human beings, and we can't always analyse them or reduce them to a formula which we can readily communicate. But those values are still important, and I would say faith is, is certainly akin to that. Do you think there are more non-believers in Britain than religious believers? I would say absolutely to that now. Um, I think the Social Attitude Survey, the last one that was published, I can't remember the date, maybe it was 2010, for the first time it was over 50% of the people said that they were not religious. Do you personally think religion has a place in today's society? Definitely. <clears throat> Definitely. So I think, you know, we are all human beings and I think we have a spiritual element to our existence and to deny that causes us pain and suffering and problems. So we need to get in touch with our spirituality if it's through religion, uh, Buddhism or any other religion. We just have to sort of see what actually makes us happy and what is actually important to us. It has a diminishing place, and I'm pleased about that, really. I'm not advocating getting rid of religion, simply because I'm not advocating telling other people how they should live their lives. If people want to be religious, that's absolutely fine by me. Whatever the religion is, as long as what they're doing doesn't hurt or harm or hinder other people from living the life that they want to live in their own way. Oh, yeah. I mean, as... Um... As long as humans are humans, I think a part of being a human being is the need to have faith, is to need to be drawn beyond yourself, hopefully for that to happen in a culture of support and love. And certainly my experience of Christianity, Catholic Christianity even, is that that helps me to be more the person I'm called to be, I, the person I am within myself. So. There is a place for religion in humanity, full stop. As a human being, the capacity to believe, the capacity to love, and to, in a sense, the capacity to reach beyond ourselves is something that we need. And certainly I find it through faith. Mm -hmm.